Bull Armory, Axie Hatchet. Let's check it out. Bull Armory is one of the most exciting gun companies that's entered the U.S. market over the past few years. They're introducing those standard guns, like 1911s, uh, 2011s, that rival guns that are twice their price. And then, of course, the Axe-C, which we're going to look at today. And this is the hatchet. Last year, I reviewed the Cleaver model, took it to tactical response, it performed extremely well, to the point that I took my Gen 5 Glock 19, I put it back in the bag. But then Bull introduced their hatchet, and this is an upgraded version over the cleaver. There's a number of things that I really like about the hatchet above the cleaver. And yet the price comes in at not much more than a stock Glock. And yet you get a lot of advantages, a lot of upgrades. These are made in Israel, and Bull Armory has been in business since 1990. Been very popular in the European competitive circuits because they just make really high quality guns. So we're going to take a look at the Axe hatchet, and guys, if you like that proven reliability of the Glock design, this just takes it up a notch higher, gives you a lot more advantages, and I'll tell you what, the trigger in this gun is just fantastic. And guys, we want to give a big thank you to the guys over at Bull Armory for sending the Axie hatchet for this review. All right, guys, the Bull Armory Axie hatchet. This is the compact version, which C denotes. There's also a full-size version as well. It's 9mm striker fire pistol it holds a 15 plus one and you know it's the size of a glock 19 it's actually a gen 3 clone but very modified and there's a lot of features about it that set it above a factory stock glock we're going to talk about some of that but one of the things about the glock is it's a proven system uh, of course introduced in the early 80s and it has become one of the most popular designs for a semi-automatic pistol in the world and very trusted durable i call it the ak-47 of the handgun world but there's a lot of options out on the market uh, and not necessarily glock inspired uh, there's a blue bazillion polymer frame striker fire pistols so why pick the bull why pick the hatchet we did a review on the uh, cleaver which is from Bull Armory, and this is uh, their base model. Uh, it does not have the optics cuts, and we'll look at that. It has some different uh, slide serrations, uh, much more improved with the hatchet. Uh, the grip texturing is better on the hatchet, but honestly, when I got this pistol, I took it to tactical response, and I went through the fighting pistol with this handgun, and it performed incredibly. Uh, and Bull Armory really puts a lot of quality into their firearms. Now we did a review of the SAS-2 Ultralight. It's a very small 2011 style pistol, 1911 upper with the double stack magazine, and then the Bull Armory TAC 4.25, which is their medium sized 2011 pistol, which compares very much to the Staccato P. Now before we get started, let's go ahead and drop our 15 plus one magazine um, and chamber is empty uh, with the magazine it's made by bull armory it has these wings on the base plate which correspond with this little cut in the grip and what that does is when you have any kind of ammo induced malfunction uh, you and you get stuck you can pull this out it gives you a little bit of leverage to pull out but also it has a steel lining inside a lot of the glock aftermarket magazines do not have that it gives it this rigidity it gives it the strength that it needs 
and these perform very well, but it will also accept your standard Glock magazines and will work just fine. But some of the big advantages over your Glock is the grip angle. So you have more of a 1911 degree grip angle. That really helps with natural point of aim. A lot more texturing, and we'll look at that in detail in a minute. We have a flat face trigger that is absolutely excellent. Glock is known for having really spongy triggers. And while I've gotten used to that over the years, uh, this is really an exceptional trigger. And also you have a optics plate here uh, that will take your RMR or Holosan and it will fit directly onto the slide, no adapter plates. The slide is stainless steel. Uh, it has a PVD finish on it. You can get it in just the, the raw stainless steel. But the PVD finish really gives you a lot of protection. It is a kind of a matte finish. But one thing I really like are the slide serrations, which are not serrations. They're actually like indentions of golf balls. And they are really excellent. I mean, it gives you a solid grip and it makes it a beautiful gun, very unique. It's also along the top of the slide. Now the barrel's 4.02 inches, which is typical for your Glock 19. And to be honest, it'll take most of your Glock 19 Gen 3 parts, if not all. Uh, so, you know, it is compatible, but one of the things about the Glock, again, is that it is very simple. It's a very simple, easy, durable, easy to change out parts. There's a lot of reasons why Glocks are so popular. I can take this handgun, strip it all the way down to the bare bones, and be able to reassemble it, and I don't have to be a gunsmith to learn how to do it. And that's one of the big pluses for the Glock system. But one of the big things about this handgun is it comes in at a very reasonable price, not much more expensive than your standard Glock. One thing that a lot of people do is take their stock Glock and they'll change it all out. They'll stipple the grips. They'll uh, put different slide serrations or slide cuts on it. I mean, they, there's just a number of things you can do and it's a pretty cool way to be able to customize your gun for yourself. Uh, but that costs quite a bit of money. Uh, this is just a standard uh, no-cut frame, so it's not the MOS version. And so with the bull hatchet, there's just a lot of things that are going on here, and yet you're not paying a really high price. Uh, I typically reserve price for the end of the review, but the MSRP on this is $620. That is not a lot more than your standard Glock out-of-the-box MOS version. So that is a huge appeal as well. Texturing on the grip, very well done. Uh, it has that laser etched kind of feel to it. Uh, and then we have the pyramid shapes, which actually are directional. Uh, this is a very solid grip in your hand and it really holds on well, no matter how fast you're shooting. Uh, you, it's easy to adjust the grip and it's not too sharp that it's uncomfortable. It, it is an advantage over the original cleaver model uh, it just gives you a little bit more, but the front and back straps are the same. Uh, and to be honest, that's where you do most of your gripping is front and back strap. Mag release, very well done. A little bit raised over the standard Glock release, and then also you can switch it to the other side, which you can't on the Gen 3s. Trigger guard has been undercut, which is a big deal. If you shoot a lot, uh, this will start to wear on your hand, especially at one time. Uh, and then we have a double undercut, which aligns the natural aim of the pistol in the right configuration. Uh, we have a three-slot Picatinny rail over just the standard rail of the Glock. One thing I do like, too, about this frame is we have this recoil management area right here. So as I bring up my two-handed grip, it gives me a ledge to be able to place my thumb, which aids in recoil. Just a good point to be able to lock down the firearm, and it is on the other side. It is a three pin system and the pins have been dimpled. They are stainless steel, which just really helps to save your frame. A lot of times around this area, if you're using it, a punch, you can slip and this just helps. Also, we have an extended slide release, which just gives you that little bump and that really does make a difference, but yet it keeps it very minimal. Takedown levers are the same. They are in stainless steel. And we have a nice beaver tail that comes out farther, so this just helps to rest it in your hand with a little more control. The magwell is slightly flared, so it gives you a little bit of a magwell to be able to insert your magazines really easily. Uh, one thing I've noticed, though, is that the magazines do not jettison out. Uh, if you have it in the down position, they will fall out, so they are drop-free, but they don't really pop out. 
But overall, the frame has been very well finished and thought out and designed. A little bit of a lip that comes down just gives you that towards your pinky for that pinky press. Now when it comes to the slide, it is optics ready. And this is the RMR footprint. Uh, we'll take a look at that a little closer in a minute. But this actually rests right down on your slide. And that gets it as low as possible. Uh, steel sights with a cocking shelf. And these are three dot, which, you know, you can switch these out because they are Glock pattern sights. And then you can see the golf ball pattern on the top of the slide. Now, I want to show you the optics plate system. And of course, here is your cover. Uh, there are two posts. And so I can take my RMR and it just lines up right with the holes. And it butts up really solid uh, on the slide. And then, of course, the Holosan, this is a 507C. And same thing, it's the same footprint. And so that way we've got a great system to where it'll go directly onto the slide and that just sets it lower. And even with these standard sights, uh, I can get the sights at the low bottom of the screen on the red dot. And so I don't have suppressor height sights I've got to worry about, I can use standard sights. And that's one of the advantages of getting it down on that slide. We have cuts right here in the slide to expose the barrel just a touch and it is crowned uh, very slightly, but crowned to save your accuracy. And then we have a metal guide rod, which we'll look at that when we break it down. There are additional cuts in the slide to relieve a little bit of the weight, but it's more stylized, and it makes the pistol look really nice. But the PVD finish is a matte finish, so it's not going to have any kind of glare to it. And then we have a stainless steel extractor. And hatchet is marked right on the barrel. Your trigger is a flat face trigger with the red uh, trigger safety. That just keeps you from firing it unless you have a full pad onto the trigger. A little bit of take up and it hits a definite wall. Just a touch of resistance and then a nice crisp break. Reset right there. Guys, the trigger is just excellent and definitely a great upgrade for this handgun. And the trigger weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brown Ales. Three pounds, 12.5 ounces, four pounds. And guys, typically it's a little bit under four pounds. So it's gonna give you a really nice trigger break. Weight on the Bull Armory hatchet, 23 ounces. Weight on the Glock 19, 24.45 ounces. So it weighs almost an ounce and a half more. I want to give a big thank you to Fiocchi for sponsoring our ammo, all made in the USA, one of the largest suppliers of ammunition in the country. And also, we love our Maglula from Lula Loaders, saving our thumbs. Bull Armory is putting out some incredible firearms. You know, with the TAC 4.25 or the Ultralight SAS-2, uh, those are fantastic. But when you bring in the Glock platform, and this is really a copy of the Gen 3 Glock, but then massively upgraded. I had one of the standard axes that I took to Jaeger's fighting pistol, and guys, it performed flawlessly. I mean, it was just a beautiful gun, but this is an upgrade with the hatchet has more features to it, but man, it just shoots extremely well. It has its own proprietary mags, which are excellent, but it will take your Glock mags. Very smooth, a lot of the stippling, uh, especially right here in the grip. I mean, it gives you a good solid grip, a lot of different texturing on the slide. It's a beautiful gun. And then with this recoil reducing pad that allows you to get your, finger, your thumb on there, it's an extremely shootable handgun. Of course, you know, it has optics ready. Yeah, you, know, you can put an optic on there with no problem. I like it though, at times without an optic. And uh, even the texturing on the top, it just allows you to have a firm, solid, confident grip no matter where you grab it. Real nice Picatinny rail up front. The trigger is fantastic. Much better than a Glock. Uh, and then too, with the beaver tail coming back, it just allows you to get a real high ride on the handgun. Uh, no malfunctions. We've been shooting this thing like crazy, and um, I'm going to tell you guys, Bull Armory has really stepped it up.
tell where I have my thumb on that little uh, shelf right there, and man, it just makes it super flat shooting. Nice undercut here, so you're not getting your Glock knuckle. Uh, the uh, magazines have a little lip on them to be able to pull them, and you have your cutouts here, so easy to pull those mags out, and especially if you have any kind of malfunction, which honestly I don't think you will. But uh, very impressed with the Axe series, and the hatchet again just steps it up. Now for disassembly, we're going to drop our magazine, check the chamber, it is empty. Uh, bring back your slide about an eighth of an inch, bring down your takedown tabs, pull the trigger, and the slide comes right off, and that just disengages your striker. Uh, we have a recoil spring that is a, is a metal guide rod with a flat recoil spring, and then we have our barrel. A stainless steel, and just excellent, has standard rifling in it, so you can shoot lead reloads, and that's one thing that you can't do with the polygonal grooves of your Glock. It will clog them up. And so that gives you, if you like to shoot lead round bullets, then that gives you a, just that advantage. Um, slide, again, very well done. The interior of the slide is also very well finished. Um, and of course, it has just your standard Glock configuration. Uh, the frame itself is also that standard Glock configuration. You can change out all the parts with Glock parts if that's what you want to do. And so it gives you some parts compatibility in case you need to repair the gun or have any kind of mods you want to do to it, you can do it with Glock parts. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can do it. Especially if you have a minor breakage, uh, and that just gives you something to be able to do. One of the things about it, guys, is even though Glocks are incredibly reliable, uh, there are certain things that can go wrong with Glocks, and having an extra set of parts is a good thing. But it's rare. All right, let's go ahead and put in our barrel. We're going to reassemble, put in our guide rod and recoil spring, and then bring it over the frame, check for function, and we're back in business. We have a nice case that's padded with the Bull Armory logo, a zipper on the outside, field, Velcro field here, and a nice grab handle. Uh, open it up and we have a flap that covers and you have your pistol with hook and loop field here We have straps to be able to strap it down And then here at the top you have a place to carry your magazines uh, And also you have your owner's manual you have a brush Lock all that stuff, but this is a really cool case I like this a lot better than a box because this is something I'll use so again it takes that Glock proven simple design and it just gives you upgrades. Let's face it, the Glock has been around, again, since 1980. There are a lot of things that have changed uh, with the shooting sports, with the shooting industry, and self-defense. And a lot of the grip angle, the trigger, optics cut, better slide serrations, all those are huge pluses. If you're a Glock purist, if you like the stock Glock, then stick with a stock Glock. I mean, for me, I'm a Glock guy. Stock Glocks are typically what I carry, what I depend on. In fact, typically I won't even change the trigger. I will change the sights. That's one of the biggest things. I do like the Wheaton Arms flat face trigger for a lot of them uh, because it's just such a great trigger. But honestly, this has been great for me. One of the big things about the Glock is it's blocky, uh, you know, and it's just what it is, especially with the finger grooves on the Gen 3s or Gen 4s. And so that gives it more of a full-handed feel to it. A lot of people don't really care for that. And it's one of the things about the bull is that it's thinned down here on the sides. It's more ergonomic. Again, it has more texturing, and that's just an advantage over your standard Glock. Now, there are a lot of Glock-inspired pistols that have been produced. Ever since the patent ended for the Glock Gen 3, a lot of companies have come in. Some have come in with more higher end qualities, advantages, reasons that you want to jump ahead with your Glock. Uh, but they've also introduced a number of versions that are actually less expensive, like your Dagger. Anderson Manufacturing has a, a really good budget-friendly Glock type pistol. And so this really goes more toward the upper end. But here we have one of the Zev OZ9s 
incredible handgun. I mean, Zev Technologies has been making great aftermarket parts for a number of years for Glocks and a lot of big Glock upgrades. And with the OZ9, this is just an incredible handgun. And it does have a chassis system, so it does separate itself. Uh, even a metal front end right here with your standard Picatinny rail. And it's heavier. Uh, but it is. this is a great gun. And then we have the Shadow Systems, which has really come in with a beautiful gun, a lot of cool features to it. But the Shadow Systems comes in retail at $1,040. The Zev OZ9 comes in at $1,760. The Bull has just as many great features as either one of these, if not better. And it comes in at $620. Uh, so that's one of the things that Bull has really strived to do, is to enter the market with a very quality handgun for more of a reasonable price. But now with that being said, uh, your base model cleaver. This comes in right now, and this was over $600 at one point, but now they're running these for $399. Guys, if you're interested in any kind of Glock type pistol, this is one that I would pick up because that is a phenomenal price. It doesn't have the optics cuts, but otherwise it has most of the same features as your hatchet. Just the grip's a little different and the slide cuts. Guys, when it comes to your standard stock Glock, uh, this is just a great pistol. You get MOS version, and it, the price doesn't really come down much lower than your hatchet. So the Bull Armory Axe Hatchet. Uh, guys, this is a huge upgrade over your standard Glock, and yet it comes in pretty close to the same price as your stock Glock. Uh, a lot of great features with the flat face trigger, with the 1911 grip angle, uh, with the metal sights. I mean, there's a lot of things that the hatchet brings, and that really aggressive grip. So before you take your standard Glock and you go out and you get all this work done and double the price of the gun, here you have, to me, even a better option at a lot cheaper price. But guys, if you don't like the Glock because of the grip, because of that blocky grip, or you don't like the trigger, uh, this also comes in and honestly shoots as a totally different pistol. Yet, it carries over that legendary Glock design that has been so reliable for so long. And again, we do appreciate Bull Armory for sending the Axe Hatchet for this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. They've made a very a sheep of the Gothic. It's just exceptional about the. <laughs> 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 Guys, you won't find a better 2011, no matter what the price. I mean, dollar for dollar, you're not gonna beat the Bull Armory because the Bull Armory is gonna run you over like a bull. Bull, and that's no bull.